Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring the Daring. Again, mostly because, well, it was requested that uh, I would showcase Andrew Cunningham on the Daring. Now, I mentioned al already in my earlier testing that I think that Cunningham excels on the Conquer. It'll probably do quite well on Thunder as well, but it's especially good on the Conquer because unlocking that Wither achievement is so much easier. There are some things that you can gain benefits from with the Daring, of course, uh, with this Captain. But, for example, Wither is an achievement that I'm gonna do my absolute best because, well, the reason why I slotted him on the Daring was just to showcase well, how difficult it can be at times to get that achievement. You saw how easy it was in the Conqueror game. Well, this Daring game, I'm pushing in aggressively towards the objective. Uh, I'm hoping my team would give me a bit more support. I'm requesting support, but they're all sailing very far back. This is something that's honestly pretty common, is that people play early safe in the early game, especially when they have a DD spotting for them. And note that this game doesn't have a carrier, so there's no risk of being spotted by anything else in the early game. So you could... You should support your DD. A quick look at the matchmaker. They do not have a radar. They do have three DDs now. So there's a high chance there is in fact one DD here. I pop Hydro, but I keep pushing because as you can see, the Smolensk is sailing back towards that island. He's gonna glide behind the island. If you look on the minimap, you see that I'm actually turning in towards the Drake and the Smolensk and I'm dodging their shells while at the same time closing the distance with the Shimakaza. I'm shooting AP of course, because it's giving me such a nice flat broadside and daring AP DPM is absolutely disgusting. Thanks to the Hydro, uh, seeing the Torps coming is not an issue and they are quite easy to dodge. So that's a pretty good 12, 13,000 damage on the Shima. He's left with about 8k, he's forced out of the cap, but I can't chase him any further. We saw on the minimap, we saw Smolensk and uh, Drake pushing around the island, so I know they're going to be popping up any second. So I drop preemptive torpedoes into the gap that I know they're going to be coming through, and I turn away and disengage. Because chasing him any further would just get me killed and undo all the hard work that I just did. So instead, we back off, we reverse, we secure the objective, and we start moving towards the B objective next. I've done my job on this flank. Smolensk pops up, but I've already created enough distance to get out. But what about the Jean Bart and the Drake that are following him? One, two, three. There we get lightning fast talent. The Drake was pushing up right behind him and surprisingly he didn't pop Hydro. I guess he didn't expect me to push so aggressively and torpedo so aggressively. And he gets caught out and eats five torpedoes and gets devastated. More importantly, we got two floodings, so we procced lightning fast. And this is that speed boost. What is it? 8% speed increase on the daring. So one of the greatest weaknesses on the daring has just gotten nullified. That is the sluggishness of the ship. With the 8% speed boost, well, you can actually break 38 knots in the daring. I think I do like 38.5 or something in the ship. In fact, I'm gonna go straight here to give you an idea of the impact it has. It's not huge, but for people who are used to the extremely sluggish nature of um, the daring, it is a nice change to be able to actually feel somewhat agile in this clumsy destroyer. 38.5 is what we're topping out on, which honestly considering the normal slowness of the daring is quite a nice experience. 38.7 we kept out on, uh, I've entered the cap though, and now I'm gonna see if I can maybe get some torps in on this Friedrich de Grosse. The idea is if he keeps pushing into the cap or maybe even turning out a bit, my torpedoes have a good chance of catching him. Note that I'm running the new um, torpedo module, which increases the speed of the torpedoes. Um, for, well, it's basically the best, best in slot for hybrids and uh, torpedo destroyers. If the ship had better AA, well, even if it had better AA, I'd probably still run it, because the AA module has become so useless. However, I see that the Friede Grosse is turning hard right, he's already Smoke turning out. Uh, I think the Shimakaza smoked up behind me or something. In fact, we, yeah, he's, he had a smoke sitting there behind me. So the Friede Grosse, upon seeing the smoke, instantly started turning out. So because I know I have no chance of landing these torps because he's turning out, I instead use the chance to smoke up and farm a bit of free damage on this guy. Maybe get a couple of fires because, as I mentioned, my goal in this game is to get that wither. I want to proc all of these Cunningham specialties. I want to see if you can actually get all three of them going uh, for a commentary. 
The goal is obviously to display the strength of the Daring with all three achievements. We only get one fire, he dodges the torps and he's running away. Meanwhile, they are pushing quite aggressively into the C objective. The short smoke runs out, but I don't really want to follow my the rest of my DDs down south. There is a Shima here, and the one thing that the Daring is exceptionally good at is hunting down other destroyers. So, <coughs> excuse me, instead of going around, we're just gonna crawl up close to this island because there's a chance that this Shima that was pushing down south, he's gonna cancel that push and he's gonna come sailing out full broadside in front of me. So I'm, I'm basically sitting here in ambush position, waiting to see if he tries to run away. My 2DD is pushing to see, so ideally he would be boxed in. But instead of actually turning out, he's just stopped. He's actually just stopped. Uh, my lock on, this is a bit of a replay bug, my lock on is actually on the Shimakaza, not on the Vladivostok miles away. But that's that's what happens sometimes when you comment replays them. There are sometimes some UI elements are a bit off, more than the normal World of Warships UI. <laughs> the Shima has smoked up, so it does go dark. Uh, so I'm going to utilize this moment to see if I can get some dual purpose torpedoes in. Dual purpose torpedoes are basically my favorite type of torpedoes. It's when you try to line up torpedoes in such a way that they have a chance of hitting two different targets, maximizing your chance of getting some sort of utility out of them. In this case, the purpose of these torpedoes is I might hit the Shimakaza in the smoke, or alternatively, I might hit the Albemarle that's pushing into the smoke. So they're dual purpose. They might hit both or they might hit either, or of course, in the worst case, they might hit neither. But by always trying to go for this dual, dual or triple or even more purpose torpedoes, you maximize your torpedo utility. The Albemarle takes down my Ognebo, and they have killed my Shimakaze, but I get them right back by taking down the Shimakaze with my torpedoes. Of course, that means the torpedoes are spotted and the Albemarle will most likely dodge them. <laughs> However, that means I procced Cunningham's hidden reserves. When you get two kills, you get one extra consumable of each, which means I get another heal, a smoke, and a hydra, which of course is always useful. Normally, it would be more useful if the, uh, I was actually engaging them more, especially the enemy DDs, but regardless of the situation, it never hurts. Salem asks me for a smoke screen, I tell him negative. And in fact, I'm gonna tell him to get back because there's no point in me smoking him up right now because there's an Albemarle pushing around the corner and this Conqueror is closing the distance. He should not be pushing in the way he does. Uh, Salem smoke firing penalty is 8.2 kilometers, I think. So if I smoked him up this close to the Conqueror, all they need to do is close the distance uh, just one kilometer and he's gonna be spotted and he's gonna be caught. So instead I just tell him to get back, get out of here. I, I In fact, I decide to smoke up myself to shoot, but he seems completely resistant. He doesn't even turn into my smoke to disengage. Um, by smoking up north, I gave him a way of turning, turning into safety. But instead of turning into safety, he decides to turn north into the enemy and into a crossfire and crossfired between three different battleships he instantly dies um this of course makes the game much harder for us i don't know why he chose to do these things but you tend to see a lot of interesting plays coming from salem smolensk players and such mostly because these are tier 10 ships you can buy with resource not tier 10 ships you have to actually grind so the playmaking ability of these ships can be very questionable at times. Regardless, um, I once again tried to farm that fire on the Conqueror. I dropped some preemptive tor torpedoes, but my goal here is I've gotten my speed boost, I've gotten my hidden reserves, so now I want to proc that most important perk on Andrew Cunningham, which is that 10% reload. And of course the way to do it is to get the wither. So what I'm doing right now is, well, I'm trying to get some fires on this Conqueror. Right now we're still doing pretty well. We're down a ship, but all my team really needs to do is just defend B and we will win quite handily. However, you do know when I say those words, it means my team is going to do something silly. I push north, I'm gonna start farming this Conqueror, get my wither. Meanwhile, we're taking a look at the minimap. Well, my Shanbar, who could ideally just be holding B, is actually pushing into B. And he's pushing activated. into multiple torpedoes and a crossfire. I have a North Carolina in 
uh, on the two line that's actually chasing a Shimakaze and a Smolensk. Spoiler! North Carolina is a very slow battleship and Smolensk and Shima are both very good at farming him. So I already know how that's going to turn out. It's still not the end of the world. We're down a bit, but I, I, it's, I don't, still don't think it's the end of the world. I think it can still be recovered. Uh, as long as they don't make any early suicidal moves and just focus on defending our objective. Although I think my Shanbart is going to die because the Hindenburg will obviously be just spamming torpedoes into that gap. And at that close range, Hindenburg is rough to Citadel. Still, my Kremlin is pushing up, and if my Kremlin just parks there, doesn't get, get too early excited and just starts blapping them, playing safe, get back. Get it's fine, back. but <laughs> as I'm pinging him to get back, it appears he's not actually interested in stopping, but he's in fact more interested in rushing into them. I drop some single line torpedoes on the Vladivostok, as well as a narrow spread on the Conqueror, and surprisingly my Kremlin is actually pushing up, giving flat broadside to the Friedrich der Grosse. And if there's one thing German BBs are very good at, it's brawling point-blank range. And Hindenburg torps Schanbart as expected, Shima Putkaze torps North Carolina as expected, and my Kremlin overextends into a crossfire and he's in some huge trouble. I'm trying to alleviate the issue by farming this Conquer. Once again, farming for my Wither, and at the same time, honestly, just trying to save my Kremlin, who's in such a terrible crossfire. I get a torpedo in on him, I got two fires, so that's a lot of flooding and fire, but he still has damage con. So, no Wither yet, and now we have to whittle down the remaining 12,000 health that he has, and we have to wait out this damage con before we can get any additional fires. It looks like I will be able to take down the Conqueror at least, smoke runs out, but we're still gonna chip him down. Somewhat amusingly, someone, the Ibuki takes him with a fire tick, but I'm not really too bothered about the kills right now, I'm still trying to win the game. We're now down to a 5 versus 5, still doable, although my Kremlin is still overextended and gets himself killed. My Hindenburg and Ibuki have sailed into our spawn and giving up all the cap control that we had. So the enemy has pushed B as well as what appears to be a DD in A. So what looked like a very comfortable win uh, is, as tends to be the case in World Warships, the most comfortable wins tend to turn into the most uncomfortable of situations. Because in world, people in World Warships have this tendency to try to win harder. They see an advantage, they see your team has the lead, so they take this as a green sign that we can do whatever we want, because we're going to win anyway. What they don't realize is that uh, 11 other players on the team are thinking exactly the same way, and you get situations like this, where people just... They don't really understand what they're doing, and the game can spiral out of control very, very quickly. Now we're down to a 4 versus 4, but the issue is the enemy has all three caps, and uh, as you can see from the score timer, they're gonna win in three minutes. So I need to do something, and I need to do something fast. The idea here is, of course, to get ideally some torpedoes in an Albemarle, uh, as well as getting maybe some fires and damaging. I'm still trying to get that wither for the sake of the commentary. Still trying to farm that wither. I've only gotten three fires though. The problem with the daring is that it's not nearly as consistent of a fire starter as something like a conquer. And you can't just, you have to get very close to be able to shoot the ships, unlike once again the conquer. So you can't just pick and choose a battleship and farm it. Uh, you need to somehow, in another way, farm that wither. My Hindenburg dies. My Ibuki, instead of pushing into the objective, as I would so dearly wish for him, eats Shimakaze torpedoes. So now it's just me and the Baiji left. It's 2 minutes 20 remaining. I can't afford to sail all the way around this island. I can't even afford to try to go to for the objectives anymore. We need to kill all three remaining ships to have any chance of winning this. And I push in to 
maybe try to get the Albemarle to pick a fight with me, so my, my Baiji, the Baiji of course has incredible AP penetration, I featured it in a commentary, and it also has incredible accuracy, but just as I push in, I noticed the major mistake that I made, namely, my Baiji is shooting a Chi. So I already know at this point that, well, this is gone. My last hope is trying to close the distance and get some torps off before I get killed, and maybe the Baiji will finally punish this flat broadside, and that was a volley of HE coming in from my teammate. So, absolutely no chance, and this game ends, well, pretty clearly, pretty obviously, in a defeat. There's not much to see here, my Baiji shoots some additional HE at these cruisers, and we end up losing it. The reason why I chose this game in particular is of course that even though we did a lot of damage and we did a lot of work in our dairy it shows you how hard it can be to get that wither achievement on destroyer even on a gunboat destroyer like the daring that is quite good at starting fires you can do so much work 247,000 damage two devastating first blood high caliber confederate we absolutely carried our weight this game, yet getting with her was still out of our grasp. And that is why even though Andrew Cunningham is good on the daring, don't get me wrong, it's a nice commander on the daring, um, I still think he, abs he shines on the conquer. Because that best perk of them all, that 10% reload, that 10% DPM buff, is so very RNG and so very difficult to unlock. Team score wise, well, we almost reached 2,000, and yeah, I mean, well, there's not too much else to talk about in this in this scoreboard. It is it it is what it is. It, it was a it was a valiant attempt, but the game spiraled out of control very quickly. This is just a very common thing in World of Warships. The the bigger the lead you have, the more likely that your teammates will do something that is impossible to recover from. It happens very very often. Detailed report wise, well, we didn't even get close to the wither. We reached 35,000 uh, 35, dot damage, and we had 11 different sources of dot. Five floodings and six fires, yet nowhere near. Torpedoes did 95, and just raw shell damage did, what, 116, 117k. 54 spotting, 900 potential. We did do a fair bit of healing. We tanked 33,000 damage in a daring, which is of course a very respectable number for a destroyer. Uh, probably thanks to the hidden reserves. I'm not sure, I didn't actually double check. Did I manage to use all my heals? I don't, I'm not sure if I even did. Regardless, 100 or 100k damage to the conquer alone, but still no wither. So I will reiterate the point I made earlier. Cunningham is good on the daring, but he's excellent on the conquer. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're interested in the build I'm running on the daring, it's still exactly the same build as in my previous daring commentary, and until the IFHE rework, I don't really see any reason to change it either. Thank you for watching. If you can be honest, I do appreciate the support on my YouTube channel. And of course, we are getting stupidly close to that 100,000 giveaway on Twitch. We're something like a thousand followers away or something equally sh ridiculously short. So if you feel like uh, dropping a follow there, that would also be appreciated. I will talk to you guys next time. Have a fantastic week.